Hi everybody, this is John Lamasny, and a friend of mine just recently uh, indicated on a Facebook thread that she was having trouble using Inkscape in order to accomplish this task where she would um, put tick marks around the letter O. And so what I decided to do was to make a screencast for her and for you so that um, I could demonstrate that. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, open up Inkscape as I have here. And I'm going to hit 5, which uh, brings me down just to my page. Uh, it doesn't really matter for this particular example uh, what size the page is, but if you want to change your page size, of course, you can do it here in the document properties. I have a default template that has all of these icons and other shapes that I use all the time off to the side. Just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to select all those. by doing a control A and then deleting and that will open up some of the memory uh, for Inkscape. <clears throat> so let's say that I wanted to have the letter O and I'm going to put it uh, right in the middle of my design. I'm going to use this grid. I'm going to hold down control and shift while I size it up so that uh, I have constrained proportions, meaning that it won't stretch if I hold down Control and Shift. And it also uh, resizes from the center. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, Bezier tool and I'm going to set it to uh, paraxial line segments, meaning only horizontal and vertical. And I'm going to make a short segment and I'll hit Return and now you can see I have this line right here. It's not the right size. I want it to be similar in width uh, to the O. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here next to my stroke uh, color and I'm going to try 8 pixels. That's not quite it. I'll try 16. 16 is better. Let me see what 32 does. 32 is perfect. Okay, so the part that she needed help with was finding an easy way to create 12 of these around the O. And what she probably did not know is that uh, Inkscape uses this center point when you are in rotation mode. When you select something once, it's for resizing. When you select something twice, it's for rotation. And when you're in rotation mode, you see these rotation handles around the corners, you get this uh, plus sign in the middle. That's your center of rotation. So if I rotate it right now, it will rotate uh, based on the center of the object. That makes sense. I'm going to undo that rotation. But if I take the plus mark and I move it down to the center of the O, notice now that when I rotate, it rotates around the O perfectly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this, and as I move it, there's another feature in Inkscape that is the uh, spacebar painting feature. <clears throat> that means that while I have this selected and I'm moving it around, if I hit my spacebar, it leaves a copy, a duplicate, of that line. And so as I move around, and line it up, I can perfectly lay out these lines according to my grid. Now if I select this and rotate it, notice that the rotation still goes around the center. And because I uh, duplicated the first object, this first line that I created, <clears throat> it also maintains the uh, adjusted rotation point. In other words, I didn't have to move the rotation individually for each of these. Right? Now, if I wanted to be very, very particular, and uh, if you know anything about my work, that, that's not really me. 
But if I wanted to, uh, one thing that I could do to make this absolutely perfect is to uh, bring in a new uh, grid line, a new um, guideline here, and align it with the center. And notice that there's a small circle on this guide. If I move that small circle to the center of my O, <clears throat> then I can uh, rotate by double clicking on the guideline I can rotate the uh, angle to be whatever angle I want it to be so I could then align these so if I say 45 for example and say OK you can see there's my 45 degree angle and it rotated based on that center line I'll do the same thing again uh, because as far as I know you cannot duplicate guidelines <clears throat> so if I do um, let's say 33 you can see I start to get uh, very precise guidelines that will not reproduce when I export this. They'll be held on to in the SVG when I save the SVG, uh, but if you viewed the SVG in let's say a browser, uh, it would not show the guidelines, it would not show the grid, it would just show the items that I have dropped. So I can see that this uh, series of objects is uh, kind of high on the page, so I'm going to go ahead and move that down. And at this point, I could uh, select this and export it, uh, or uh, I could play with the color, right? I can make this, let's say, red. And notice that if I try to select that line and hit red, it doesn't change it to red because remember, this is a line, and so what I'd need to do is affect the stroke. So I can go into uh, Stroke Paint, go into my Wheel Color Mode, and then match that color like so. So I hope this has been helpful. This is uh, an advanced uh, way of using rotation in Inkscape, and I enjoyed talking to you about it. Have a great day.